Welcome everybody to Beyond the Shadows. I'm Aqua Ghost Story and Mike Ricksecker. Tonight we're going to be talking about Men in Black versus the Hat Man. I've been getting a lot of questions. Well, I've always gotten a lot of questions about whether or not Men in Black are actually shadow people. Of course, I get this with a lot of other entities like Slender Man, Skinwalkers, Black Eyed Children, things like that. And because of, thank you, Ancient Aliens, this has now come up again with Men in Black. Um, I probably don't get it as often as the other ones that I just mentioned because I didn't actually address Men in Black in A Walk in the Shadows, which is a complete guide to shadow people. If you haven't yet, please pick it up. So I didn't cover Men in Black in there um, because it wasn't coming up that often every once in a while. Uh, but now, now, like I said, thank you, Ancient Aliens, it has uh, been coming up here the past few days. So I wanted to get in a little bit as to what Men in Black are and then the Hatman type shadow person, how these things may be related. They're not. But um, yeah, so what happened on uh, Ancient Aliens was that as they went through their Men in Black episode that they just aired on Saturday, um, there was a, 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 a moment there where, um, oh, what the heck was the name? Albert, Albert Bender. Um, I know the last name because there's Benders in my family, but Albert Bender, um, he had seen walking through his wall, manifesting through his wall, three, uh, three hat men wearing fedoras. And they had these, they were shadowy in nature and they had these glowing eyes. And so he related them to the men in black because he had previously had uh, men in black experiences. And so I understand why he related them to the men in black. And so um, I contend that he actually had two separate experiences. This prior one with the men in black, this one I believe was an actual shadow person experience, but because he doesn't have any context or reference to go back and say it's a shadow person. Um, you know, he related it to the men in black because he had had men in black experiences before. So let's get into this a little bit. So what are exactly the men in black? And then, um, you know, what are the, the hat men type shadow entities? And why do I believe that this experience that people are throwing at me now as see men in black are shadow people? No. So we'll get into why that is not, <laughs> or at least why at this particular moment in time, I don't believe they are, because remember, I always reserve the right to change my mind. So um, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to go ahead and throw them down there in the chat. Um, I will allow for a, a call-in line a little bit later, and I'll toss that up on the screen here after we get going a little bit. So um, any initial questions? I'm not seeing any, so let's go ahead and... Um, and get into it. So, so the the men in black. Um, these have been reported, you know, basically since or around the time of um, the 1950s when we started getting into the. Um, actually, it goes back to 47 when we started getting the uh, reports of the different UFO sightings. Now, people have been reporting UFOs um, since before that time, but it seems like around 47 is really when things started to pick up. We had. Um, you know, that's when flying saucers were dubbed flying saucers, which um, was in Washington State. And then, um, you know, we had Roswell in 47. That's when Project Sign was started. We did pro the Project Blue Book stuff um, a couple weeks ago. So Project Sign became Project Grudge, became Project Blue Book. So it's all related. And so the Men in Black started being seen um, around this time. And so um, let me go ahead and toss up uh, a couple of photos here for you so these are the ones actually um uh from the niagara falls incident uh, which is much later than <laughs> when they were first seen but see now this is this is a man in black so he's got the got the hats you know um you can see that they have a face they're wearing suits jacket um they just look like regular guys so basically what had happened here was there was a sighting in the niagara falls area and these guys came uh, uh, looking for the witness and the hotel manager um, to talk to them. And that's kind of what ends up happening is that these these sightings happen, and we don't know what detail kind of sets these guys off, but they come there, they end up knocking on somebody's door and basically, you know, kind of threaten them to say, you didn't, you didn't see what you actually saw. You know, you're not going to tell anybody about it. 
So um, you know, basically when this first happened was um, Maury Island. Uh, it's another one in Washington State uh, with Harold Dahl. Uh, basically he was scavenging logs, saw like six donut-shaped uh, UFOs. One of them was in trouble. Um, it was basically, you know, chaff was blowing off of it. He says it killed his dog. Uh, his son got injured, all these different things. And so, you know, after this thing, this incident happened, um, he, of course, reported it. And not long after, Men in Black show up and, um, you know, ends up at a, uh, at a diner and he's basically being told you didn't see what you saw. Um, but he still, he still talked about it for a time and then he, he reined it back in a little bit. Um, so really this, it, it's interesting to me how it only goes back about that far. Um, so a lot of people will say, well, government agency, because it does seem to tie in with, um, you know, that time frame where, you know, the Roswell stuff happened and, you know, when these organizations started being formed, uh, you know, within the government. The interesting thing about that is not all the government agencies, you know, knew about these men in black. Um, um, J. Edgar Hoover, FBI, sorry, had uh, brain brain kind of died there for a second. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover from the FBI um, wasn't aware of the minimum. Oh, he was aware, but he didn't know where they were from, who they were representing. Um, he was unfamiliar with their department, if they had one. Um, so he was always asking questions about who exactly are these guys, who are these men in black that are showing up at these scenes with the these extraterrestrial sightings and, you know, basically warning people off of uh, these different occurrences. So, uh, yeah, Betty Lange says, they remind me uh, in Dress of the Blues Brothers. Yeah, that's kind of a, um, it's kind of funny because uh, when I was doing searches for some of the images and, you know, I'll, I'll toss up a couple more images, um, you know, I was getting... You know, and I'm, you know, trying to find stuff like this. Okay, here's a couple of guys and hats and all that. Yeah, I was finding a lot of Blues Brothers stuff, especially since Dan Aykroyd has had a number of sightings, including a Men in Black sighting. Um, and with him, basically, he was working on a on a television show. Um, he took a call uh, about, it had to do a Saturday Night Live, and of all people, it was Britney Spears on the phone. But he had stepped outside to have a cigarette, take the call, and... He saw um, across the street, like, this man in black, you know, the whole, what exactly you think of a man in black with the hat and um, and the suit and all that, and kind of gave him a nasty look. He was by this black Ford Explorer, and, you know, he's still on the call, so he turns for a moment, turns back, gone, completely gone, goes back inside. Now, this was a a show that was going to be on sci-fi, and it was about, UFOs and, and sightings and things like that finds out suddenly pff, show is canceled so it could just be coincidence but you know maybe not but that was his man in black sighting and of course it's it's funny that it's you know Dan Aykroyd a guy who played one of the Blues Brothers right so um Chris Stanton were the first sightings out west or all over the country so I mean, there have been UFO sightings all over the country for, you know, decades and decades and decades. Uh, we just don't ever think of um, stuff prior to Roswell, but it did happen uh, before Roswell. And we just, we don't ever think about it because that's not the stuff people talk about. But it did happen all over the country. Um, some of the more well-known ones, um, you know, the first initial ones like there in, in Washington State around Mount Rainier, Roswell. Yeah, those are more out west. But then, um, you know, you have some of the other stuff like, um, you know, some of the abductions and, uh, you know, some of the men in black sightings were seen at like uh, uh, with along with the Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant. And so those are out east. You know, so there's, uh, you know, been a lot of stuff all over the country um, just, you know, when we think of some of those first initial ones, they were, some of those were out West. 
So, um, Roland Gerodias, there are two different versions of the term men in black. As by a ufologist, John Keel stated that the proper term men in black with a capital letter M is referring to a more supernatural entity versus the men in black as government agency. Do you feel the same? Well, you know, that's kind of the, the, the question here. Um, is there a government agency with these men in black or are they supernatural entities or are they two different things? I mean, honestly, we don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who feel that the men in black who people think are part of a government agency because they, they look and act the part are actual uh, extraterrestrial beings because they tend to come around during times in which some sort of extraterrestrial event occurs there's been some sort of ufo sighting or crash or something like this and somebody has seen it and they report it and then the men in black show up on the doorstep you know knock on the door and you know basically warn them you know you're not you're not going to say anything um again they look and play the part and like i said earlier you know like j edgar hoover fbi they had no idea who these guys were um, yet there was a um, government agency um, around that time who um, the uh, like the Air Force would work with the uh, Project Blue Book uh, worked with from time to time. It was actually a uh, Air Force um, squadron. It was the 4602nd Air Intelligence Service Squadron that worked with um, you know Project Blue Book. Now. When you think of squadron, it's not necessarily, I mean, it's not, it's not like these guys. You know, these are kind of, again, your classic men in black. They kind of look the same. Um, a lot of men in black are reported as being bald, uh, wearing the hats. Sometimes not the hats, but most times with the hats. Now, if you are part of a Air Force squadron, well, you're in the military. So usually, usually, you're wearing a uniform. Um, but there are certain times... Like when I worked at NSA, um, and any time that I worked in the building, um, I was in uniform, uh, whether it was my blues, the BDUs, what have you, um, I was in uniform within the NSA building. But there were some times that we had to go do some special stuff um, outside the building. And I can't say where because um, it, was, it was out in the public there, but it was... Um, Basically, locations hidden in plain sight that uh, the NSA was utilizing for different means. And when we went to those places, we dressed in suits. Um, didn't have to be a black suit, and we didn't have to wear hats and all that, but uh, we were asked to wear suits. So I'm not going to say I was a man in black, but <laughs> but they wanted our identity identity to be masked so that anybody seeing us walk into this building would just think that we're some sort of, of businessmen, um, that, that we weren't part of the military. Um, so, you know, there's, there's that sort of thing to, to mask an identity. Um, but it didn't happen often. So could these guys that are part of this squadron, you know, could they have been a bunch of guys in suits? I don't know because, you know, I wasn't a part of, you know, it was long before I was born. Um, but, you know, common Air Force military practice is to be in uniform. Um, and these weren't people in uniform that were going up to these doors. They were more like, I mean, honestly, they did look like FBI agents, but the FBI was saying these aren't our guys. Um, the CIA was just being born around that time. So 47 would have been pre-CIA anyway. So where did these guys come from? Um, as far as like being a supernatural entity, um, this is where people are, are coming across and saying, well, you know, they're showing on ancient aliens that, you know, the hat man shadow people are, you know, the men in black. Well, I would say, yeah, the, the men in black could be their own type of supernatural, I would say extraterrestrial entity. Um, could even be interdimensional because we see like like uh, black eyed children are there. I, I believe those are interdimensional beings, but you know you see the the details, right? I mean, yeah, they're creepy, but you know you still see hair, eyes, even though the eyes are all black, facial features, all of that. 
um, with the men in with the men in black, you see facial features. Um, I guess generally they're bald; they don't have hair. They're, yeah, they're wearing the hat, but you see the face. Um, you kind of you know you see the hands, you see all the detail, and they're showing up. Um, you know, at the at the people's doors as human beings. Um, I mean, the the one guy's talking about going to a diner with one. Well, you're you're not going to a diner with a shadow person, you know. Um, and that one report was okay. Seeing the three with the fedoras, you know, walking into the room. You know, you think of the situation. So you know, he's tired. He's laying down. And this, I'm not going to you know excuse you know stuff on because that's almost like dreaming. You know type hallucination which i talk extensively against <laughs> in a walk in the shadows that no these are things we're seeing they're not hallucinations but he's in that type of situation and he's seeing these things walk into the room and he does say that they're shadowy um they're, they're wearing the dark suits they have the fedora hats um and then glowing eyes which to me is interesting so it kind of speaks of the um you know, the hat man, shadow person, sometimes they are seen with red eyes. And I actually forgot to bring up the shadow people. And I have all these men in black uh, photos here and not the actual, um, you know, I guess this one has the sunglasses, not the actual shadow people. Of course, I forgot to bring up the, the shadow people pics. Let me try to add one here real quick on the fly. So let me just go through. Be, um, so I, I think what he experienced was uh, actual shadow people during that particular uh, incident that they were not men in black, even though he had experienced men in black before. I think it was uh, two different things, and I don't, I can't say why um, shadow people may have been visiting him during that particular moment, um, but I think that's what he experienced at that time. Um, now, if men in black are some sort of interdimensional being. Now, I, I, I do, um, um, I, I do hold that. Here, here's a good one. Okay, flanked by. In in this particular photo, the the hat man is flanked by the two, um, two humanoid figures. But you could put in glowing red eyes because sometimes people see glowing eyes uh, with the with the hat man. Um, and now that I just said that, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, um, I, I have said at, at times that, um, you know, there could be like interdimensional cousins, like these things could be related, but they're not exactly each other. And I've said that before with um, like shadow people and black eyed children that, you know, a true shadow person and then black eyed children, um, you know, are both interdimensional beings, but they're not the same thing, but they could be like interdimensional cousins of each other. Uh, for lack of a better term. So um, let me get to some of the other questions here. I kind of went on Roland's thing for a while. It was a good question, though, Roland, and we'll get uh, a little bit more into that um, as, as we go along here because that's kind of the crux of um, why I'm bringing this subject up tonight. So Robert Hanna, do you think these same men in black from the 50s and 60s are still around today? Uh, good question. You know, if these are, if they're just humans, I just bang the microphone. If these are just humans and they're part of a government agency, probably not. You know, they'd be pretty old today. You're talking, you know, 70 years have passed, right? 60, 70 years. Um, so they're not, those are not going to be the same guys. Uh, unless, you know, one of them started really young, 18 years old, and is now, you know, at retirement age. <laughs> it would be, it'd be pretty old. It'd be like senior advisor or, or something like that, right? Um so if any of them are still around same guys, um, this would probably lend more toward it being like an extraterrestrial, putting on the disguise of a human or something like that, or if it's an interdimensional person. I just don't believe that they're uh, shadow people. Tim Schoen, yes, you're right, Tim. I forgot to do it at the outset. This episode of Beyond the Shadows brought to you by Haunted Road Roast. It helps young ghosts. All right. Uh had to throw that out there, right? So, um, see what else you guys have for questions because there's a lot of chat that went by while while I kind of monologue. So, Roland Mari Island, I believe, is the first court sighting. Harold Dahl, yeah, we talked about that uh, earlier. Um, see, Tom McNicholas, 
Since there are many that know of men in black, wouldn't they try to change the color of their jackets? Well, you'd have to ask them. <laughs> I don't know. Um, black seems to kind of be standard issue. Uh, the difference between you and me is I make this look good, right? That's the Will Smith thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I. It, it's one of those things, like the military does this, where... You know, they will all want you to make, to look uniform, all look the same, no individuality that, you know, and there's something disconcerting about that if you're all looking the same, especially if you have two guys standing there or three guys, you know, all looking the same, all wearing the same hats, all wearing the same suits. You know, it's it's an intimidation factor. So um, so I would say that they're probably still, you know, if they're, if they're still out there, which some people do say that they are, that, um, that they do still wear the black suits. Um, Sharon McLean, the men in black showed up, intimidated people who saw Mothman. They thought it was government agents. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, that's another one that they got into. Um, they're an ancient aliens. Um, Pam Presno, people are scared to talk about the visits, right? Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Is they, they basically feel um, they feel threatened that um, you know to not talk about their experience. A lot of a lot of them end up turning uh, completely around, and saying, "Oh no, 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 no! I was just lying. It was just a hoax." nothing to see here, you know, even though everything leading up to that point, um, you know, they were like, no, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And there was like no reason for them to turn around and say otherwise. Um, and you know, you look at some of the, you know, the government reports, the actual paperwork that the government had filed on these different, uh, sightings, you know, everything there is saying, um, you know, these people had this experience and then all of a sudden, to the newspapers, you know, they're turning around saying, oh, no, it was just a hoax. I'm sorry. I, I was I was just kidding. You know, and they just suddenly want nothing to do with it. And it's because they've been intimidated uh, by these characters. So um, let's see. Um, so the chat is kind of hiccuping here. So, uh, Jin, are Jin able to change shape? So, okay, um, that kind of, and I probably, because it's kind of skipping here a little bit, I probably missed something above, um, and Robert Hanna mentions it as well. So, Pam Presnell, uh, are, are Jin able to change shapes? Um, Robert Hanna says Jin are believed to be shapeshifters. The, the thing with Jin um, is, yeah, they're, they're believed to be like a trickster type entity, and so um, there are a lot of... Um, Theories out there that some of the shadow people that we experience and see are actually jinn. Uh, that that maybe some of these jinn are putting on the the hats and the capes and that sort of thing to impersonate a human being. And you look at Rosemary Ellen Guiley's work, and um, she made a lot of those parallels. And I do and I do mention it. in there is a small section in there on jinn and a walk in the shadows um, that. They being trickster type entities, it kind of plays that part of, you know, they're going to try to impersonate a human sort of thing. Um, where I draw the line is when some people try to say, well, all shadow people, all hat people, all entities with the, you know, shadow people with the red eyes, um, et cetera, et cetera, all the crawlers, you know, they're all gin. And I don't buy into that. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy into like, you know, all the men in black being gin or what have you. Do I think some of them could be gin? Sure, because that kind of adheres to you know the nature of gin. But another one of the reasons why I kind of you know why I kind of move away from that sort of thing, um, like gin are basically a you know, legend, folklore. Some people do say that they are real spirits, and they very may, may well be. Um, from uh, Arabic culture, where the shadow people sightings have been all over the world for all time, so not just one specific culture. Now, as you know, that the influence of that culture spread, those stories started making their way into other cultures. But those other cultures already had uh, shadow people stories and experiences and things like that. So it just it kind of added on top of it another layer. Um, you know, it, it wasn't something, it wasn't something new, um, or, or anything like that. It was, you know, people were already having these shadow people experiences. So, um, now men in black back in, back in those times, now they didn't exist back then. 
um, because the the dress was just different. Now, if we suddenly found like a, uh, I don't know, it would be interesting, like, you know, ancient cave art or or something like that that shows a, a suit. The ancient alien guys would jump all over that. You know they would. So, um, so Betty Lange, Mike, lots of movies back in the 1940s were black and white, and men wore outfits like that. Maybe it took uh, movies from the outfit, and and that's kind of the idea is that, like even with the even with the Hat Man, that um, he's trying to impersonate um, a, a, a specific style that it has seen. And what's what's been interesting, a lot of the um, interviews I've been having lately on A Walk in the Shadows, um, you know, have to do with, um, you know, the hat man and then like this, the theory of space and time. If, if they are outside of our realm of time, as we see, if they're an interdimensional being, time may w- work differently for them. So it may be that they just yesterday were walking around in the 1940s and seeing people walking around with fedoras and trench coats and stuff like that. Um, and so they may be like, oh, well, that's how a human dress is. I'm going to get that and wear it. But because time is working differently for them, now suddenly they're here in 2020 and, you know, boom, they show up in, in your room or down the hall or whatever wearing that sort of garb. You know, people have reported, um, you know, top hats and capes. People have reported like a Zorro type hat or an Archer type hat. So all different kinds of styles of hats. So it may be that they have, they have seen this at another point in our history and because time may be working differently for them, they just, hey, I'm going to wear that. I'm going to put it on. And, you know, they show up today and the style's different. So um, a lot of different ways to uh, think of that. Um, so Nick Mule, how come there aren't as many stories or encounters? Are you talking about with the men in black? There's not as many stories or encounters. I mean, there's quite a few. Um you don't hear about it as much anymore um, as, say, something like a, you know, like a shadow person or a ghost or something like that. It's a, everybody's on the demon kick these days, so it's always a demon. Um, we still occasionally hear about, about the men in black stories. So, um, Roland, do you feel if the men in black still exist, do you think they would control the media by inundating us with fake news about aliens producing ancient alien series? Uh, this is a throwback to the X-Files where a government agent told the smoking gun the info was made up and fed and made it less credible well um i mean i i think we're (laughs) i think we're already intimidating ourselves with fake news i mean that's the whole the whole uh, thing with the fake news is we're hurting ourselves i mean fake news is being created that you it's so that's clickbait so that you you know you go into that and you watch it and you um you know, observe the content on this particular, you know, website or feed or page or whatever it is so that you are, um, you know, you're basically going down the rabbit hole. You're now on their page. So now you're seeing their advertising. You're getting hit with all these ads that maybe hopefully that you'll buy something. It all started with the clickbait of the fake news. And they're basically using that fake news as bait to lure you into their crap that they're ultimately trying to get, you know, your money from you, however they may be able to do it. And usually it's through, you know, the service of ads and and what have you. Um, Some of it is uh, generated to get you to believe a certain belief about something. So, you know, it might not be a product that they're trying to sell you. It might be a certain belief that they're trying to sell you on so that your thought about the world today is not what's really going on, Um, which then you're not able to make um, proper intelligent decisions about, you know, about your life in the world around you, uh, because they want you to think their way. And so they will feed you that. So there's a couple of different ways that fake news is, is used. Um, could men in black be doing that at all? Or are they intimidating, uh, people to create fake news? I don't know if they're actually intimidating people to create fake news, but, um, to maybe prevent things and that was kind of the thing back then was it was a preventative measure was they were intimidating these people so that certain things didn't end up in the news which may in a be in a way by subtraction be fake news in itself if you think about it but um yeah it was it was used as a preventative measure rather than um 
you know, trying to create fake news is more of a proactive measure uh, rather than rather than um, preventative. So um, let's see. Oh, okay. How come there aren't as many women in black encounters? Because people don't report women in black. <laughs> they don't. Now, they will report, and I just kicked the camera. Um, now, they will report like um, like a succubus or a, uh, like with old hag syndrome, they wake up and like the old hag is, is sitting on them. So there'll be reports like that or, you know, like a female ghost or an apparition or something like that. But... Yeah, you don't hear of a uh, of a female in black. That doesn't that doesn't really come about. Um, I'm not saying that they don't exist. I just unless somebody can correct me down there, I haven't haven't seen um, anybody report on that. Now, when it comes to like black eyed children, yeah, sometimes there sometimes there are boys, sometimes there are girls. So that kind of mixes. Um, but the other ones, yeah, you don't really hear of you know, of a woman in black. You just don't. Um, so Betty Lange, what is the Hat Man? So I mean, the Hat Man is that, that's where we're getting back into um, shadow person. The Hat Man is a type of shadow person. Basically, shows up um, here. Where's Adam's photo? Well, actually, Adam's illustration. So this was by Adam. Um, so basically, this is a this is a Hat Man uh, shadow person. Uh, I do want to show Adam Tillery's uh, cool piece of artwork. I think this is more of a uh, of a man in black than necessarily a hat man because you see all the facial features. So this would not be a shadow person. Um, this would be more of a of a man in black. Uh, you know, the hat and uh, he's not really wearing a suit there, but um, cool illustration by Adam Tillery. And he drew this for, for somebody else, not for me, but um, he wanted to share it. And, you know, we love Adam. So, um, but yeah, the, um, you know, the hat man, um, Basically, he'll um, you know show up. Uh, it might be in your room, in the corner. It might be at the end of your bed. And a lot of um, a lot of theories when it comes to the Hat Man is that they're there to instill fear upon you and act as an energy vampire and feed off of your fear. Now, I do make a strong case that not all shadow people are evil and nefarious and meant to do you harm. The Hat Man seems to be. I have not really heard of a good uh, Hat Man story, you know, where he's not up to something nefarious. Um, so, and that's and that's another another place in which I will differ that Hat Hat Man Shadow Person and the Men in Black are different. So, the Men in Black are trying to you know prevent you from doing something, but they're not like really trying to feed off your fear. They're trying to instill fear into you so that you will stop. You know, talking about the aliens that you saw, but they're not, you know, as they're, you know, trying to get you to stop talking about that, they're, they're not standing there and feeding off of that fear, which is kind of what the hat man does. Um, that's what a lot of the reports are, is, is especially the ones where they're standing at the end of the bed and they're just standing there staring at you and just you know, relishing in that. Um, and that's just not the function of, of men in black. Um, two different, so it's like they look similar, but two different functions completely. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Shauna, I want to be a woman in black. <laughs> you wear plenty of black. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, Adam's artwork is fantastic, absolutely. So, uh, Roland, there's a theory that men in black are time travelers who have returned to prevent certain things occurring by intimidation. The story stops thus. The timeline is maintained. This is gaining ground since a babushka woman in the JFK assassination or man of time and photography. Does this make sense? I mean, there are, I mean, there's a lot of theories about time travelers. Could men in black possibly be time travelers? Um, and, and they've come back to try to prevent people from talking about certain things. I mean, it's a possibility. Uh, we say that sometimes with, with shadow people. We say that with a lot of different things. You know, even like your, you know, your regular ghost, are they out of time, to, which would actually make them a type of tra time traveler. I mean, if you think about it, even you could be a time traveler. You could be. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm not kidding. So a lot of... Uh, reports of 
apparitions. Well, I won't say a lot, but there are uh, there are reports of people seeing apparitions, like a woman from the 1800s, and she's just sitting there on on you know on the chair in the room or the bench or standing in the doorway or whatever. And you're looking at her like, oh my gosh, I see, I see a ghost. I see an apparition of a woman. And she turns and looks at you as if you're the ghost, you know, or I love Andrea Perrin's story where they walk into, she and her mother walk into the dining room. There's a couple of guys sitting at the table there. They're clearly apparitions. And the one turns and looks like, well, you look at that like Andrea and our mother are the ghost. So if you think about it, you're looking back into time at that point when something like that happens they're looking at you at the as the ghost you're looking at them as ghosts obviously there are two moments in time here that somehow for whatever reason have overlapped right so you're getting a glimpse of the past that means that that apparition that you're getting a glimpse of the past at they're looking at you and they are seeing the future so in a sense you've traveled back in time in a sense they have traveled ahead in time so we can time travel, just we're not sure how it works or why it happens when it does. So um, you guys have had some uh, very good questions down in there about all this. So um, see what else you guys have down in there. All right. So... Yeah, I mean, that's that's really kind of the big thing is that I wanted to, you know, kind of clear up because like I said, it, it's something that's been thrown at me here uh, the past couple of days because of, again, thanks Ancient Aliens for um, this story from, from Albert Bender uh, about the three men in the fedoras that showed up in his room. I think he had a hat man experience at, at that particular point in time. And because he had had a previous men in black experience, he just related it to that but i don't think they were the same thing at all um you know i do i think men in black exist i mean you have so many of these reports that i don't doubt it do i believe that they are a supernatural entity or government agency i think there's a little bit of both going on here you know i think there is there's certainly government agencies out there that will show up on your door in black suits and haul you off and you'll never be seen again those exist um it happens and you know there are certainly times in which people you know kind of dress the part because that's what they're required to do um so those people exist as far as government agencies now are they the kind of official men in black or are the men in black something else? Well, I think that those men in black, because you've had other government agencies coming into the fray and wondering, who the heck are these guys? Um, I, I think some of these other men in black are, I guess I want to say they're more extraterrestrial in nature. Um, they could be they could be interdimensional. Um and there are there are cases there are, or there is a case to be made for that some extraterrestrials themselves are interdimensional that they are they are an extraterrestrial in another dimension coming to our dimension and visiting here so they could actually be both extraterrestrial and interdimensional at the same time um, and for some whatever reason they don't want something disclosed and so they're trying to prevent the eyewitness from uh, disclosing that bit. Um, so I think it's a little bit of both. And there could even be some crossover there where, you know, the government agencies, the ones that actually do dress in the suits, you know, they will go and intimidate sometimes. So which one are you actually getting? We're not sure. So, um, Sharon McLean, what's Einstein's thought in regard to time? So I'm not going to get too deep into to Einstein, geez. But he did have some different theories on space and time, and he had some examples. You know, when I started doing my what I call stack time theory, um, you know, I kind of thought I was you know coming up with something on my own, and uh, you know, started diving into um, some other information and discovering that Einstein actually had some similar concepts about um, you know time working concurrently that everything's actually happening at the same time um and so he had 
you know, with, with his space-time theories, a, a lot of things centered around that, um, which was pretty interesting seeing that it kind of coincided with a lot of things that I was coming up with on my own. It's like, oh, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. <laughs> um, there are some different things. And as far as like some of my belief systems, I'm not sure how that really works out too well because how does how is everything working concurrently if you also believe in reincarnation? It's, it's you got a lot more to get your head around with that. Um, so let's see. Um, Robert Hanna, there have been stories of people encountering the men in black as they acted or looked robotic like. Well, yeah, and that's part of the kind of intimidation factor. So, yeah, they're, they're very like emotionless. Um, you know, what you see in the movies with, with Will Smith, I mean, he's high drama. So, like, Tommy G. Lee Jones is more the very serious. So, that would be more of. <laughs> of uh, of the men in black but yeah i mean it's it's and it's part of the um the intimidation factor is very disconcerting when um the person that you're uh talking to shows no emotion because we will in a conversation read people's emotions we'll read the expressions on their face to get different signals as to okay how how is what I'm saying affecting the person? Should should I keep responding in this fashion or should I change it up based on not just what they're saying but on their facial expressions, which is what makes things like, you know, as you um, go from actually having a conversation to going over the phone where you can hear inflection in the tone to texting where you have nothing but words um, is where you start to lose communication. Um, so when you have like full communication, you are looking at the person, you're able to talk back and forth and you're getting nothing. You know, it's basically, it's like you're looking at a text message, but you're standing in front of the person. It's very disconcerting. So yeah, it's, it's definitely an intimidation factor. Uh, Roland, the reptilian creatures infiltrating the government, they could have, uh, planted the men in black as security measures to keep the idea that aliens are among us. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, now you're starting to get into whether reptilians exist or not. And I just, I, I dude, I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, people do report reptilians. Um, I've never seen one. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of like the movie um, or the miniseries V. So basically the reptilians were, um, you know, coming down disguising themselves as humans. And then you come to, you know, discover that it's a lizard person. So, you know, is, is that somebody running with, it, it makes you wonder, is that somebody running with sci-fi and trying to inject it into our legend and lore that we have today and trying to tell people that, no, this is actually real, you know, or... You know, were people from the mini series influenced by experiences that people had already had and things that they were reporting and trying to show what well, this actually happens? I don't know where that line is and which is true. And I mean, we could speculate all night on to, you know, as to, you know, where the men in black originally come from and who influences them. Um, you know, we could say that, you know, they're influenced, you know, from people from Pluto. You know, I mean, we don't know. We don't know. So we could also, if we get into theories of like simulated uh, universe type thing, are these guys sent here? I mean, are they like agents from the Matrix? Are, are they sent here from, you know, the outside into our world and they're like agents of the Matrix saying, uh-uh-uh, don't you go there. There's a lot of different things that we could throw out here about this. So... um Tammy, I can totally read tone in text messages. Sometimes you can. <laughs> I mean, you you know they're yelling if it's all bold text and stuff like that. But um, you know, it's a lot of times you can't, and a lot of times when you're texting back and forth, uh, messages will get misconstrued because you're just not getting that tone correctly. Um, and so, Nick Mula, you think Men in Black are reptilians? This guy's. I'm not saying that. I have. No idea, and I'm not going there. <laughs> I mean, we could, I suppose, if you really want to, but I really have no idea if men in black are reptilians in disgust. They could be. They could be anything. I mean, they could be, I mean, shoot, they could be demons in disguise, right? No idea. Um, but they are something for sure. Um, I will say that they are something for sure. Um, 
And so I guess that's what it comes down to. You know, there are one of three things, and they could all they could be all three things, um, depending on the experience. It could very well be government agency. You know, it could be a government agent coming to your door, and and you know threatening you. Um, could be that it's an extraterrestrial that doesn't want you spreading any information about what you've seen because it somehow implicates them and their race. Or it could be an interdimensional being for basically the same reason as the alien, that some piece of information about what you have and what you've observed will um, kind of out their existence or give uh, humans a little bit more of a clue as to what's really going on here. Um, So and it really could be all three, depending on the situation, working unknowingly in tandem. I mean, it really could be. So, um, you know, government agent could show up the, at the door, knock on it to intimidate, and, you know, come to find out that, oh, wait, well, you guys were already here. You guys are back, you know, or something like that. Um, you get that occasionally, too. Um, Betty Lange, would you even want to tell a newspaper you saw a UFO? You know, it was a, it was a, it was pretty common. Um, especially back in the 50s. You go back to like 1952, they call it, you know, the big flap um, because there was just a huge outbreak of UFO sightings all over the country. Um, and that's something that Project Blue Book uh, really observed in, as they are collecting, you know, their their data and um, you know, putting their reports together is that that time frame, 1952, it just skyrocketed. It took off. And so... Um, yeah, yeah, you'd see that in the papers a lot, and it became, it kind of like really became a threat, almost like uh, you know, with the Cold War, with you know, communism was a huge threat in in one in one arena, and then the UFOs were a threat in a whole other arena. So, um, I guess it was a time to, that people were just scared. I don't know. 1952 is the year my dad was born, so I can't really ask him um, what he thought of that time. And my grandparents are gone. Um, so I can't ask them either. So, um, I just have to go by, you know, the experiences that people that were around at the time reported. Um, and when it comes to the project blue book and you see this huge spike in 1952, um, and I've, I've read some of the stuff from J. Allen Hynek. Um, yeah, that was, that was a huge time for, for these, uh, reports and sightings. So, um, Robert Hanna, do you buy into the theory that we may look like the Greys in the future? So that's a uh, interesting question. It, it really is, because some people have speculated that the Greys are us from the future come back. Um, you know, or they are. They may not even be. You know, that would be basically saying that they're a time traveler, but it might not even be that. It could also be a part of the human race that, you know, if you get into like lost civilizations and the idea that we may have had some sort of technology before to allow space travel or that maybe an extraterrestrial race had been here and maybe took some humans away. A lot of things, or if we're originally from Mars and came here and that civilization had blossomed elsewhere in the solar system before coming to Earth, a lot of different ideas. Um, but that humans could have, a, a group of humans had gone elsewhere, evolved, came back, and they're gray aliens. So, um, you know, and, and there is there is some science behind this that, you know, elsewhere in the universe as, you know, gravity, you know, different uh, gravity in different areas um, of the of the universe, you know, could play on your body that it would have a physical uh, effect over uh, the human body over time, and that it would eventually turn into what we call the gray alien. So it's it's possible um, that grays were once humans or are humans from the future that have come back that have evolved over time, maybe. Um, What is interesting, though, is that most greys are reported looking identical. So there's also theories out there that the gray aliens may also be a a biological type of probe that has come here from some other planet or 
uh, race of beings that are elsewhere within the galaxy. And the idea for this is that um, you know we do it too. You know we send probes throughout right now our solar system, and we have well Voyager has gone beyond the solar system now, but um, you know and those are those are robots, right? Uh, for lack of a better term, it's it's technology, but that at at some point in time, we may send some sort of biological type life form out there to be, um, you know, to be a probe, or perhaps we design, you know, AI is coming a long way here, um, that we design a line of machines that look very human or like us or whatever, you know, we're, we're not probably, if we're sending them to all different, you know, parts of the universe, we're probably not going to make them all look different. We're probably going to you know, factory, boom, 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 make a bunch, throw them out there into the universe and then send us back information. Um, and that could be what some of these aliens are, that they're actually a, not really the, you know, the alien race itself, but a probe from the alien race that their, their technology has made this bipedal, um, type of being that is their probe. So it's a, uh, a lot of interesting different uh, concepts here. So, um, what else you guys have? What is this? The Mike Ricksecker collection. Did I miss something here? Okay. I, I guess I missed something. He's talking to Sean. That's Sean Gilmore. Sean Gilmore in the house. I'm going to be on Sean's show tomorrow night. So, uh, be sure to check that out. Um... Sharon, good point. We don't have to go to the press anymore to tell our experiences now. They aren't the info gatekeepers. Yeah. Um, you could have a UFO incident and throw it up on Instagram, Facebook. Does anybody use Snapchat anymore? <laughs> um, you could YouTube that. I mean, you look on YouTube and you find all kinds of different UFO uh, videos that are out there. Some, you know, some legit, some not. Uh, you you kind of don't know what you're going to get. But yeah, I mean... People are throwing their experiences up there all the time. I mean, we do that with the paranormal. I mean, our paranormal investigations are up there, and you see, you know, the the shadow people we've seen, the apparitions that we've seen, you know, different, you know, crazy things that have moved, voices we've heard. Yeah. Um, but people do. People will go to the press with, I saw this, I experienced this, and they'll go to the press first. Some people still do that. So Tom McNich Nicholas asking about the Paracon tickets. Okay. Breaking here from the Men in Black for a moment. Talk about Paracon tickets. So, Hunter Road Media Paracon, June 12th and 13th. Um, best deal is to get the all weekend pass. That will It's a $65 value for $50. You get the, uh, the Paranormal Panel and the Flashlight Tour on night one. That's Friday. And then you get all the speakers, uh, vendors, exhibits. Uh, during the day on Saturday, and then you get the paranormal investigation that night. So it's a pretty good value. Think about all that you're getting. You get a flashlight tour and an investigation, and all you know access to the event. It's only fifty bucks, and you see some of these uh, you know places out there that for an investigation you don't have to place so we're having it now for like hundred and twenty or hundred and forty or something like that. It's like really, I don't know. You're getting you're getting like a whole weekend for fifty bucks. It's, it's a pretty good deal. So. Um, so yeah, check that out, hunterroadmedia.com. So, uh, Sharon, it's getting harder for the government to control us in some ways. Yeah, in some ways, as far as like information, um, and, and this is, it, it's interesting. So in a lot of ways, you know, we're able to, we're able to access a lot more information these days than we ever were able to before. It's an amazing age, that, you know, what we're able to get a hold of these days. That said, there's a lot of crap out there too. So while I could find some really reliable information about, um, you know, certain events, history, things that are going on, um, we've already talked about fake news earlier. You know, anybody can throw up a website and throw information on there and have it be all totally inaccurate you know it's you can't just say well i found it on the internet you know you, you gotta you gotta know what the source is and where it actually came from so yeah it, it's um you know, you know good comes with the bad there's a ton of great information out there that we can get a hold of these days and then there's a ton of crap out there too and so um 
you know, I, th I think the government plays with that too. Um, I think they do intentionally throw fake news out there. There's a lot of diversion stuff out there. Anytime you see like a massive headline that, you know, it's got everybody going um, nuts over and crazy about and, you know, striking fear into the country or the world or whatever, look at the smaller headlines because it's usually, usually that's where the real shit's going on. <laughs> Um, I know I'm so, sounding totally conspiracy theorist, but that's usually the case is that there's something going on behind the scenes that they don't want you to see. They're, they they have your attention over here because they don't want you to see what's going on down there. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways that they try to control us um, still. And um, in a lot of ways in the pocketbook, you know, it's like... The, you know, there's a lot of different ways we can, you know, make money and get access to, to money these days and what have you. Still very tough for a lot of people, though. And um, if you look at the way the monetary system is set up, um, it, it looks like there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of people. And then when you get down to it, it's actually very tough for a lot of people. Um, and so, you know, they, they make it they make it difficult to move from one place to another. And I'm not talking about physically from like one state to another. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, from one you know, set of circumstances to another. There's a lot of controls that they have in place and they make it look like, um, you know, that you're able to do all these wonderful things. And in some cases you can, um, but it's very, very difficult and you're, you're stuck in a system of control. It's all a system of control. Um, and they've done a great job of painting the illusion that you you have all of this freedom. And we do have more freedom today than, you know, some of our ancestors. But in some ways, not. You know, um, we talked about another show uh, uh, some weeks back about like all the different, you know, means and ways of identification these days that you like have to have. You know, um, you know, where before you could, if you just wanted to start a new life, you could just up and, you know, move a few states down and just really start all over. But and just and nothing would follow you. Um, you can't do that anymore because you have all of this shit that follows you, all of these identifying things, which in, in some ways you need because it, you know, and when it comes to like certain nefarious people or whatever, it's like, eh, you know, we need to know where you are, you know, but, but others, it's, you know, it's, ah, it's all a system of control. Didn't really, that wasn't really a topic for tonight. That was more of our, I think we talked about that in one of our conspiracy theory episodes. Um, still, still can't get a hold on of going, what's going on in area 51. Yeah. I don't think any of us, um, really know what's going on there it's where all the aliens are well i mean you know bob lazar talked about um you know that's where they had some of the craft and where he was actually trying to figure out the propulsion system um of those craft that the, that were there so you know we can take bob's word for it and there are certain things about his story that are very to me very credible having been in the air force and been in some of the situations that uh, he had been in, um, and so I was like, okay, you know, that's not, I'm sure you could find out from somebody how those certain things worked, um, and, and I'm talking more of like, um, things you wouldn't even think of, you know, I'm not talking about accessing certain areas, but I'm talking about how, um, you know, government agencies and military works in, like, he was, he was talking about how his uh, his wife was having an affair, and so that they were looking at you know taking away his security clearance and you know things like that. It's not something people really talk about, um, but it really happens. You know, I had a uh, incident when I was working at NSA. My my ex wife was flipping out over some stuff, and she made it known to you know the squadron. It was like, oh Jesus! And so they they looked at suspending my security clearance for a while because she was flipping her shit, and it's. So it's like stuff like that. It's like, yeah, yeah. So it's like I believe Bob's story because of things like that that you wouldn't normally think of. You know, it's like, okay, not the not the alien stuff, not the, you know, how they, you know, grabbed him at night because they were he was trying to show his buddies, you know, the you know, the flying saucers at Area 51 and stuff like that. It wasn't it didn't have anything to do with any of that. You know, or the Los Alamos thing. Um nothing like that. It had to do with his personal stuff because it's like, I know that's the way 
the government works and that's how the military works. I, yeah, that's they would that's absolutely what they would do. So that to me made a story a lot more credible. Um and there's Roland right there, whistleblower uh, Bob Lazar. Do you think if it's true, whistleblower Bob Lazar exposing the alien engineering going on in Area 51 is a threat to our national security, or is it something we should know? I think it's something we should know. I mean, I, I think by now, just just let us know. I mean, they had like the the Brookings report talked about, you know, it, and the, I mean, the Brookings report goes back decades, and apparently back then, if people had found out about uh, aliens and it would have created a national panic and I just don't think that's going to happen anymore what in the one of my lights is flipping out over here oh, here come the aliens <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that you know, nothing I can do about it now I just let it do its thing um, you know there there is something to be said for um, the conditioning of humans over time with like popular culture and um you know our movies and our cinema and you know our television shows and kind of gearing us toward a day you know kind of slowly dumping information into these movies or at least con conditioning us to the fact that we would be okay if all of a sudden it was revealed that um you know there were aliens you know or extraterrestrials we'd be like yeah no shit right um, I think it, it, pretty much anybody watching this right now, if, if suddenly, you know, Trump got up there and said, hey, you know, I finally found out. Yeah. Alien 51. We got uh, alien technology and there's some extraterrestrial bodies down there. Yeah, this it's it's all true. I think we'd all be sitting here like, yeah, no shit, dude. <laughs> you know, it's like about time you finally admitted it. Right. Um, so I don't think it would you know, be a major adherent, adherence to national security. Um, oh, in, in that sense, I don't think there's going to be like a national panic finding out that there's actually extraterrestrials. Um, I think, I think where they would be concerned about national security is defending the borders of area 51, because that really would be a storm area 51 moment. It's like, show us the aliens. We want to see what they look like, you know? So in that sense, um, there might be a little, you know, national security thing there. But as far as like the way we're going to react, I don't think we're going to panic or have a national crisis or something ridiculous like that. I think we're well beyond that at this point. Um, and, you know, if they are, you know, trying to reverse engineer alien technology well i would expect them to do that if, if they had it on them i would totally expect them to do that you know just like any advanced technology that we somehow get a hold of you're going to try to reverse engineer it and figure out how the heck it works so that we can duplicate it ourselves replicate it ourselves and try to build upon that um you know I, I think there's a lot of that that goes on you know we do we do that when we're growing up and we're learning you know we we dive into things and we figure out how it works and kind of tear it apart and figure out, okay, this goes here and that goes there and that's how this works. And, that, and you know, and then after we've learned those things, you know, then we build and build and build. And it could even be, you know, not even necessarily with like, you know, machinery and technology, you know, it could even be something like music. I mean, that's kind of how we learn. We don't, you know, we don't, start off with you know where somebody was talking about motley Crue earlier right um i think it was on edge of the rabbit hole we don't immediately start with boom you know we, we break out into a full song like that you know we have to learn and, and build it up so we'll take like you know pieces of a song you know learn how to play these notes you know or these simple songs which actually over time become you know smaller parts to a bigger thing and so you're really you know you're reverse engineering in that sense that you're you're taking like this whole you know you want to be able to play this whole big song you know and, and get to that point and so you know you learn a little bit here and a little bit there and learn this part and this part and you end up putting it all together and then boom you're able to learn this song so that you yourself later on can continue to grow and build uh right bigger and better things so um so i totally expect that with you know, alien technology that we're going to try to reverse engineer it if we come across it. Um, all right. Um, anything else you guys have down here? Because I, th I 
think we're running pretty late here, right? Oh, yeah, we're already over the hour mark. There we go. Um, Betty Lange, certain religions would call aliens demons and want them dead. Um, well, I think there are fanatics out there that are going to say that about anything. I mean, we see that now where, you know, they say all ghosts are demons or whatever. But, um, you know, as far as like the major, I mean, the Vatican's already come out and said that, you know, hey, there may be actual aliens. We would embrace that. I mean, the, the Vatican has their own observatory. Um, I think they know more than they're letting on. And, you know, they're, they're not going to call, you know, um, E.T. a demon. They're just not, but you will have certain religious fanatics out there that are going to, anything that is strange and unusual to them, um, they are immediately going to call something like that. It's just, it's the same people that, you know, a, a, you know, a candle falls off the mantle and they're like, I got a demon in my house. No, you don't. So there are just, there are people out there like that. Unfortunately, you're going to, you're going to find all sorts, but I think the majority of people are just are going to be quite fine. So, um, yeah, Andrea, that was a nice little light show. It's, it's it looks like it's working right now. Seems to have stopped. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, the men in black are after me, right? <laughs> um, Robert Hanna, let's talk men in black, hat man, and aliens all night. <laughs> well, at some point, my voice is going to die, so we can't do that all night. I do have a lot of other things to get to. So um, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up. So basically, when it comes down to it, no, um, men in black are not the shadow people uh hat men they're they're different yeah there are some similarities in the way they look because I mean, they're both wearing hats <laughs> but they're different types of entities um you know is there a possibility that some of the uh men in black are interdimensional beings i'll say that there is a possibility of that but that does not make them shadow people and that's just kind of like saying well um uh, you know cats and dogs are both mammals therefore a dog is a cat no, <laughs> no, it's just, no, it's not, it's not. So, um, yep, two different things, maybe related, maybe not, but um, be on the lookout for those, uh, those hat men. If you haven't yet, you want to, in, uh, men in black, if you haven't yet, you want to know more about the hat man and shadow people, you pick that up, walk in the shadows, available now, of course.